Hey guys, we're doing another Assorted Lore video this week. Our topics this time are requests from these wonderful people. This week we'll be going over everyone's second, question mark, favorite merchant from the Darksiders series, Ostagoth, as well as The Chosen from Darksiders 1. So, to begin with, Ostagoth is a merchant. In terms of actual game mechanics, Ostagoth is arguably the primary vendor for the majority of Darksiders 2, selling any type of gear you need at an increasing quality as the game progresses. Aside from that though, Ostagoth is also an old one. In his particular case, a very old one. Dialogue from the Argul's Tomb DLC indicates that he remembers events from the time when Argul, the previous King of the Dead, was still in power, inferring that Ostagoth himself is old enough to remember those times and, in the main game, the Lord of Bones, the current Lord of the Dead, makes an offhand comment telling us that he was running the show when the Nephilim were destroyed, which we know to be around the same time as the birth of humanity, many millennia ago. The Lord of Bones doesn't sound terribly upset when he notes the fact that an entire species never came through his realm, indicating that he had presumably been in power long enough for things to have settled down after his coup. Since there was apparently no particular worry that the Lost Souls were the fault of either himself or his administration. So the fact that Ostagoth was around long enough ago to recall seemingly from personal experience information regarding Argul indicates that he is quite old indeed. Like the Crow Father, Ostagoth is unique in the Darksiders universe, with no direct reference to encounters with his species made anywhere, and with no name for his people being given. Unlike the Crow Father, however, in Ostagoth's case, we at least know why. When Death first encounters Ostagoth, he tells Death that, quote, The history of my people was burnt to ash along with our world, forgotten even by those who destroyed them. Seeming to indicate that not only are Ostagoth's people dead, leaving him as the last of his kind, but that so much time has passed since they were wiped out that even those who did the killing no longer remember the horrible deed. It should also be noted that something about the way he says the line, forgotten even by those who destroyed them, has always led us, and other Darksiders fans, to believe that the Nephilim destroyed Ostagoth's people when they tore through creation, as they put many worlds, and resultantly many peoples, to the sword, torching their worlds and leaving nothing but graveyards in their wake. Beyond this, we know very little about Ostagoth. We know that he is remarkably knowledgeable, often acting as the source of exposition for death when he is first encountered in a new area, telling death the true nature of the Tree of Life and Death, as well as sharing interesting information about Samael, for example. He even claims to be the only living being that still remembers the location of Argul the Mad King's tomb, which acted as the source of the previous dead king's power, a power which Ostagoth, for some reason, has a vested interest in destroying. Indeed, the entire reason Death journeys to the tomb, solves its puzzles, and slays its denizens is because he is brought there by Ostagoth and asked to finally and completely purge the tomb of Argul's source of power, presumably so that the Mad King could never reacquire it. When asked why he's so interested in the tomb and its power, Ostagoth makes the only flat-out denial given to Death in the whole game, saying that it isn't any of Death's business, and that all the horsemen should be worried about is the fact that Death will be well rewarded for his trouble. Death assumes that this means that Ostagoth, as a well-connected merchant, wants a share of whatever treasures are found within the vault. However, once Death returns, job accomplished, Ostagoth informs the horseman that he can feel free to keep whatever he found in the tomb, and that Ostagoth already had his reward, inferring that either he acquired something in the wake of the destruction that Death left, or, more likely, based upon the way he speaks, Ostagoth's main concern was simply the elimination of Argul's source of power, and with it, any chance for the Mad King to rise to prominence once more. Why this would be so important to the otherwise neutral merchant? Like Volgrim, Ostagoth seems willing to trade with anyone willing to pay for his wares, is unknown. Though his seemingly intense and private desire to see the secrets of the tomb destroyed point to the possibility that it might have been Argul the Mad King and his undead forces, that destroyed Ostagoth's people, and not the Nephilim, as most, including us, believe. Next, let's talk about the Chosen. The Chosen are encountered in Darksiders 1 and act as the game's primary bosses, each ruling over a zone in the game and carrying important items that Mor needs to acquire in his quest to clear his name and sate his desire for vengeance. The Chosen are a group of powerful monsters, each hailing from the Abyss. Thus they are not demons, but instead powerful, presumably evil monstrosities from another place entirely. The first thing that should be noted about the Chosen as a group is that the title Chosen is merely the title given to the Destroyer's most powerful and trusted generals. Those generals are Tiamat, the Griever, the Stygian, Silitha, and Straga. 
Early in the game, while searching for the culprits who engineered the apocalypse, War encounters Samael, a powerful demon, and frees him from imprisonment. War knows that the Black Tower is the stronghold for the enemy he seeks, and enlists Samael's aid. Samael, in response, tells him that if War brings him the beating hearts of four of the Chosen, Samael would then be able to open a path to the Black Tower, which was guarded by the fifth and final Chosen, Straga. Over the course of the game, it is revealed that the first four Chosen, those from whom War collects a heart, Tiamat, a great bat monster, the Griever, a bestial swarm-summoning creature who makes liberal use of the straight-up Pokémon solar beams, the Stygian, king of the Ashworms, and Silitha, spinner of webs and collector of tails. Don't guard the tower or the way to the tower as Samael inferred, but instead each had a portion of Samael's considerable power locked within their living hearts. Thus the reason Samael wanted war to return them to him, so he could reabsorb the power that was rightfully his. But True to his word, once he had consumed the energy within the Four Hearts, he opened a gateway to the Black Tower guarded by Straga, the last of the Chosen. There is often some confusion amongst the fanbase as to why Straga is considered a member of the Chosen, since he doesn't carry a heart for Samael like all the rest of the Chosen do. The answer is simply that Chosen is essentially a term for General. So while Straga is the only one of the Destroyer's generals not put in charge of a heart, he is still a powerful general in service of the evil and traitorous Abaddon, and thus a member of the Chosen. Though, in his case, instead of being put in charge of a Samael-infused heart, Straga was put in charge of guarding the Black Tower, which was, among other things, the seat of power through which the Destroyer presumably accessed, or at least managed, the usage of the Well of Souls. Though the Destroyer was presumably still able to access the wells somehow after the tower's destruction, since it's implied that a huge portion of his power came from access to the well, which is why War would need the Armageddon Blade to even hurt him. Yeah. Despite their power and the troops under their command, however, each was eventually slain by War in his quest to reach the Destroyer, and we imagine he took special pleasure in killing Straga, since Straga had killed War previously once before. And that's basically the story of Ostigoth, Merchant Old One Extraordinaire, and the Chosen, Champions of the Destroyer. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave us a like, and if you have ideas for topics you'd like to see us do in the future, do like all of these lovely people and let us know in the comments down below. If you'd like to see more videos from us in the future, be they lore or let's play, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. In the meantime, this has been True, True Masters, Masters and Morons, and Morons signing, signing off. off. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like it, hit this subscribe orb. To see our last Let's Play, click or tap the link on the right. For our last lore video, go to the link on the left. And for a video chosen by the gods of YouTube from our channel, hit that link on top. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching, watching, and we'll, we'll see you next time. time.